They said if you did not bring her in here, you would have woken up with a daughter who was passed away next to you. A very quick moment of jumping in the pool, breathing in some water, and getting out and coughing up water. It must have been more than I thought it was. She really did seem fine. We talked about it for a minute. She wanted to go back to playing, and she did. Then we went home. She took a little nap. We'd been in the sun all day. No big deal. She climbs in my bed at 11 o'clock at night. She's warm. She says, I don't feel good. Well, we've been at the pool all day. We've been in the sun, normal, but my gut doesn't sit right. So I call the doctor I'm dating at the time. He says, she's fine. I call all my friends. They say, she's fine. My gut says, she's not fine. So then I remember a little Facebook article I read about dry drowning. I say, we're going to the hospital right now. When I got to the hospital, they said, if you did not bring her in here, you would have woken up with a daughter who was passed away next to you. So I carried her into the ER, and at this point she really wasn't feeling good. I told them the series of events, and they took us in right away. They took it super seriously, they did chest x-rays. Once they transferred us to the children's hospital, they ended up doing a series of antibiotics. Every parent's biggest fear is their child being in danger. You don't expect to stay by the pool. To become a medical emergency. On top of that, I still had my daughter's twin sister and her brother, who I was really worried about and kind of arranging their childcare because I was unwilling to leave my daughter. And so it was just very stressful. I ended up actually passing out myself at one point when I went down to get breakfast and call and check in with family and I um, passed out by the nurse stand, so I ended up in the ER for a minute myself because my blood pressure just dropped suddenly. I think it was just all the stress and not sleeping. Being a mother is difficult enough without these complications. For the first like five days, she was not getting any better. She was just getting worse and it was really scary. I remember on that last day we were, um, I was like pushing her in the little wheelchair down the hall to the x-ray and I looked over at another kid and their mom and I just realized like, oh, I'm that mom with a really sick kid right now. And thank God they switched her medicine that day and she ended up getting better. Um, but yeah, it was no joke. She came into my room somewhere between 10 and 11 o'clock at night and told me she wasn't feeling well and that she wanted to sleep with me. I felt her forehead and she felt a little warm. That's when I started calling my friends because my gut just told me something was wrong. I was even about to send her back to her room because I was still kind of up and doing things and I wanted her to get a good night's sleep. But there was like an alarm inside of me that was like, don't do that. Those were our only symptoms. There was no blue lips, blue face, uh, vomiting or coughing. None of that was there. It was just, mommy, I don't feel good and a gut, gut reaction. That's all I got. Annie had never heard of the condition her daughter got. Aspiration pneumonia is where you breathe in a little bit of water, some of it gets trapped in your lungs, and then your lungs start filling with your own fluids. Super dangerous. When she initially did get out of the pool, she coughed up some water, and that is the number one sign. I've seen people breathe in water and cough it up a million times. Never have I seen aspiration pneumonia before. Dry drowning is essentially a slang term that I have learned many people hate and call false information. Even though your kid isn't in the water, they can still be being affected by this event. And that is why people call it dry drowning. Teaching your children how to swim makes for some amazing memories, but teaching your children the dangers of water is vital as well. So I think that teaching your kids to swim is number one and teaching them to have a respect and a little bit of a fear of water because it is a part of nature and it can be very dangerous. So telling them if they aspirate water, they need to tell you and let you know. Watching them, it can happen in the blink of an eye. When we went to the ER, they told me if it would have been the ocean, it would have been a much, much more severe situation because the salt would have been sticking to her lungs. Keeping them in like, like a, some kind of flotation device until they are strong, competent swimmers. My daughter was, but she just jumped in, breathed in a little water. I was right there. She coughed it up. 
and we thought we were good. She is a healthy, thriving, beautiful young woman now. The comment section were terrified of this unusual medical anomaly and grateful for Annie for sharing her experience with No one believes me when I tell them about dry drowning. I freak when my kid wants to go to the pool. And thank you so much for posting this. I never heard of dry drowning, but I will tell all of my friends and family about it. Well, if you weren't terrified of water already, perhaps you are now. Thankfully, though, Annie listened to her daughter's concerns and she was able to take her to the hospital to get looked at. Hopefully, her daughter is not too scared to go into the swim pool after that experience, though. Annie hopes to raise awareness that more parents know the warning signs and can protect their child from this terrifying occurrence. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and a share. And if you have a story like featured on our page, why not send it in? As always, thank you so much for watching. Happiest.